and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for a Mardu control donation deck here. All right, so we got a new set, a uh, new Mardu control deck from Ray Day Pinball. Uh, we've had some some different sweet uh, Mardu control decks throughout the last few sets. Uh, we had one built on Theater of Horrors uh, whenever that came, that card came out in Ravnica Allegiance um, and so on. This one here we have built with Chandra Awakened Inferno for our new win con, which I'm excited to play four Chandras in a deck. This card's really good. And uh, yeah, playing four of them, I'm pretty excited about it, actually. That's definitely the thing I'm the most excited. See if we can, uh, you know, have all of our removal spells, clear out the board, hit our land drops, and get to Chandra. So to help Chandra out, we have our treasure maps here that that uh, help us hit our land drops because you know we do need to to get there. Um, so treasure maps do a really good job of that. And then we are we're also playing discoveries in here, which I think this is a pretty good addition to the deck. Honestly, this is not a card you usually see in non uh, blue black decks, but I think that just having like I think this is an un underrated card for just black control decks in general is just one in a black surveilled to draw a card we can in a pinch cast dispersal also with the help of a treasure from treasure map but that's that probably won't come up too much though but i like that we we're playing some discoveries here um and then yeah so just in case the chandras aren't enough win cons yeah we got the squee and bantu two cards that are pretty hard to get rid of because bantu keeps going back into your library uh squee you can just keep casting it from anywhere um, so we got two other like really sticky threats that can sit back, play defense, uh, if we need them. And then if like the late game, if we take over, uh, we get to have those dark bargain is actually a card that I haven't played at all ever. Uh, you know, besides like limited, like in, in constructed, I haven't played this card, but that doesn't mean that the card's not good. Uh, you know, it is, it is a divination instant speed divination, even in black, um, where it's, you know, uh, you get some card selection also. You get to look at three, take two. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to play this card also. So besides, so the deck's looking pretty cool. And besides that, we just have a whole lot of good removal spells. And you can tell which ones uh, that we're favoring here because we just got five removal spells that we're playing all, all of them. Contempt is the kind of card that while it costs four mana, it does the job that you want. Always gets rid of any creature or planeswalker, you know, rekindling phoenixes, anything, no matter what threat, we're exiling it. Uh, it does the job you want. Um, so, yeah, ha glad to have a bunch of those. We need a lot of sweepers. Um, Othakaya gains us our life. Pretty cool looking little deck here. I'm. Uh, we're playing Leyline of Sanctities here, and I this is the kind of deck that I think Leyline of Sanctity is the best in. Uh, Mono Red's going to be tough for us, specifically with all the burn spells hitting us over and over again. The creatures we can kill. We have a lot of removal in here for creatures. We got the sweepers. We can kill the creatures for Mono Red, but all the burn spells dealing damage to us, that's something we would struggle with. We're not like really playing creatures at all for our opponent to burn out our creatures. So as long as we have Hexproof, we can kind of blink all of those burn spells coming at us. So I'm excited to play Leyline of Sanctity here in the sideboard for the mono red matchup um i'm i'm not very confident in thought distortion here that this is gonna be that good of a card because it costs so much mana six mana but you know it's a new card it'll be good to try out uh i talk about that a lot you know like how we play these different things it's good to try out different cards so it'll be a good one to try out um yeah, we'll, we'll kind of see how this works against Control. Um, you know, hopefully hopefully it does some stuff, and hopefully uh, it's good there. I do like the Planar Cleansing. Uh, get rid of everything, you know, like Planeswalkers, all sorts of non-land permanents, just destroy them all. Quality card there. All right, let's get to the games. That's enough about our deck. So donation deck here. We're going through our traditional Constructed queue. Playing till we win five or lose two. Our deck isn't going to be winning games very quickly. These this, these games will take a little while. So sit back, relax, grab your popcorn, 
and we'll be getting some nice, good, interactive, back and forth magic going on here. Lake of the Dead, that's a cool card. Always like that card. All right, nice hand. We got our treasure maps. Um, I haven't played a Sultai Scape Shift deck yet. I haven't played any Scape Shift deck with the new set. Scape Shift definitely got a lot of neat new toys. <laughs> official Gain. Getting that sub in here. Let's get some hype boats in there. Thank you so much, Official Gain. Ninth sub of the day. Almost gotten to our first sub goal. Hope you're having a good weekend there, Gain. And uh, thanks for that sub. Our last league that we just played the, with the Elemental Aggro, we... Okay, there we go. I'm going to say we struggled with some connection issues, and so seeing if that was going on here. Against the Thought Erasure deck, it's not great to have two Chandras for us already in our opener. Hmm. It's unfortunate. Our 26 land deck. I'm not finding the lands. There we go. Kefnet. Huh. No, Dastin, you are subbed. You have you have the the badge, you are subbed. I didn't I didn't get a notification though. Maybe refresh your stream, Dastin, and then like in in the place where there's the chat, there could be a <clears throat> a place to send out that notification. So I could have used all of my treasures and played Chandra and exiled the Kefnet. But then, of course, the Chandra's at one loyalty. There you go. Thanks, Dastin. Thank you very much. All right, tenths of the day... So y'all remind me after this match for us to crack a pack. I wonder if I should play Chandra and tick up Chandra this next turn instead of minusing. Minusing, of course, Kefnet is coming back. But taking up could just give my opponent that emblem, start getting the, the ping in every turn. Uh, I should... Hmm. I'm not sure. Yeah, Contempt's a good card.
I'm thinking they're gonna miss here. I don't think they're gonna get the reveal in two turns in a row. So I'm gonna let them draw the card first. We can tuck the Kefnet one card deeper. Just an another Bedevil? Is it the same Bedevil? Rude. Do they have two Bedevils now or one? I guess they have to have two. Well, that didn't work out. There's casting of a devil on a treasure? No. There should be a second revealed Bedevil. There should be. There must be some bug with like revealing the same card again. Yes, so two of these cards in hands should be Bedevils, as far as we know. They should have four, four other spells and two Bedevils. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what's going on here. Okay. Go, Squee, go. This is a good matchup for Squee. Especially this, this scenario where we're both just sitting with a bunch of removal in hand. This is where Squee is perfect. Squee time. Cool. Trade with the Bedevil. I'm good with that. I am ancient mm. and wise. Ugin's nice. Chief oh, actually. Obeys me. That's actually really good for me. I can just. Alright, so yeah, sack the Ugin. I just ignore this 2 2. Can I ignore a 2 2? Is that a thing? Probably a thing. They ignore the 2 2 and so they don't get Kefnet. Gross. Oh no. Ugh. That was worst case scenario.
That's not good. Hey, what's up, Timido? Thanks for that resub there. So I know the Oath of Kaya isn't actually doing anything there, but I'm basically making it so, like, the like Grixis has a lot of discard stuff. I don't want to just, like, sit with the Oath of Kaya in hand and hit, just have it get discarded. Where things will probably go downhill. They have to have another bedevil in hand, right? So is, is White Leyline, for this matchup, is White Leyline, does it do anything besides Thought Erasure? Because I don't think it does, right? It would have protected our Chandra's from Thought Erasure, yes, but... Like, imagine drawing a White Leyline now, like how, just, how bad of a draw step it would be. And Grass Rampage. Time drains walk my schemes are I never ending. Definitely regret not not playing the Chandra course. They just you know, the first seven turns of the game they didn't have any thought erasures. I thought I thought I was doing okay, and then suddenly it was like bam, here's two thought erasures that I just have them both set up for this turn to take both Chandras. That was really rough. This is definitely a good thought distortion matchup. This is a better thought distortion matchup than Esper is that plays. Uh, I guess it's about the same. Definitely love me some Disparks in here too. Those two are awesome. I just I'm not I'm just not sold on the leyline of Sanctities. Cause like our opponent has to have Thought Erasure for this to to really to really do something. Like if we have Leyline of Sanctity out and they don't draw Thought Erasure. I guess the games are going to go so ridiculously long, so they're going to they're going to have thought erasure. Yeah, they'll have dur duress too. All right, so then what what are we cutting? I mean, you can just get rid of Othakaya, I suppose.
Guess I just get rid of all the Kai's Wraths. Mm. They could have like War Boss and stuff. I kind of have too much removal. That's this thing. I, we kind of just have too much removal here, not enough threats. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if we want Planar Cleansing when we're bringing in Leyline of Sanctity. Like, we need this one for Ascanta. I can get rid of Rampages with us bringing in to Sparks. So it makes it worse against Thief of Sanity, potentially. If we, if we have a land on top, we'd have the Discovery to hit more land drops. And then, of course, the Treasure Map after that. So, like, really just one more land this hand is awesome. And we have the ley line and everything. What do y'all think? Do you, we have a 25 out of 53 chance, less than 50% to have a land on top. If we don't have land, we just kind of lose. We probably shouldn't take the risk. All right, Mulligan. Let's keep this. We can't re can we reshuffle our, our deck? I want to tuck the Chandra because it's too valuable to get Thought Erasured. And we were not going to need it for a lot longer amount of time. So I want to tuck the Chandra, but are we are we Are we shuffling our deck at all though? I don't think we are. No, we're not. I guess I'll still do it. Yeah, there's there's no way that we actually... There's not a world where we actually cast that Chandra before it gets discarded. It's just not going to happen. I don't I can't really think of anything that my opponent's gonna play that's gonna make us shuffle our library. Yeah, first hand with those ley lines would have definitely been better. I mean we we it's possible we just don't draw a land also with that first hand and we just kind of lose because we don't have any lands. This is the problem with Leyline because, you know, now it's like if we ever draw a Leyline for the rest of the game, it's just, it's just a dead draw. We just have like four dead draws in our deck. I don't know, it's not really exactly dead, but it's, it's not very good. I should Just see what their card is, of course, first. Obviously.
Why would you possibly think that Chandra is not a good finisher? Like how how does that What is your what is your bar for a finisher that Chandra is not a good finisher? Like what 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 is a good finisher then? Like I don't Well the fact that she's hard to protect in this deck doesn't make doesn't mean that she's not good. That's That's not really her fault. The kind of slow part is not not a problem. That's our deck wants to be very slow. There's nothing wrong with that. Wow. What a draw. This was not for this. What a draw. Holy moly. Just exile their whole hand in graveyard. Wow. Just exile everything. They didn't. Even, they didn't even put the. They didn't put the Kefnet back. They just let the Kefnet stay exiled. <laughs> you would have just sacked all the treasures and played this thing. I don't know. That's that's six cards we can draw. Or, or our opponent's going to hit their fourth Thought Erasure. They could have, they could have just as easily hit, you know, a, a removal spell, an Angrass Rampage or whatever. I, I don't regret. I was not punished for not playing the Chandra. I don't regret not playing the Chandra. Look at that. Still have a Chandra. Immolation sensation. <laughs> the no immolation <laughs> sensation. Ascanta did set him up pretty well, though. Like, the Discovery milled over a couple more lands and everything. And then the Thought Erasure milled over a land. It did set them up quite well. Hope it's not too hot for you. In case of duress or something, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna activate the other treasure treasure map now because we wouldn't be able to. Um, even if we drew like a, even if we drew a Chandra, which would be our best draw, we wouldn't be able to play it. So I'll activate it later. Land was a perfect draw, letting them bedevil land as Kanta. So ever since, um, ever since this th thought distortion, I don't think it could go better for our opponent. But we're still, still in an okay spot. They are, they're probably ahead here with Ascanta. But we have we have the two Chandra emblems, so we're good there. Yeah. 
All right, Bantu is great. One cove. Five lands. Okay, let's do this. Hmm. We just picked up three lands. Hopefully we get to flip this treasure map. Good. Yeah, I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just digging for another Chandra, basically. Don't really know what you're doing, Leyland of Sanctity. At least they can't mill us with this Enter the God Eternals now. Yeah, they flipped... Like, they... They flipped us Kanta in, like, one turn. It was just absolutely perfect. Because they they, mil they surveilled... Over, like, the as Kanta sent a land to the graveyard, they drew Discovery after the land. They Discovery surveilled to... Both of them were lands. They put both the lands there. And what they drew off the discovery was the Thought Erasure. And so then they cast Thought Erasure, put a land into the graveyard. It was just like the the absolute perfect turn. Like that that turn couldn't have gone any better. So they had nothing in nothing in their graveyard, and then the very next turn they flipped Ascanta and took my Chandra. It was pretty crazy. And they only had four mana. Yeah. Yeah, Leyline getting a negate out of their hand is big. I'm I'm really glad they got negated. Curiosity and wonder drive civilization, not petty war. Be gone, interloper. So they want to tap all of all three white sources here when I have when I'm sitting with like Dispark in hand. Alright, so we gotta cast the Dispark first. Oh, never mind, they just tapped two white sources. I wanted to play this Godless Shrine and tapped. Guess I have to play this thing. Now they just want to auto tap the treasure cove. I just have to manually tap for stuff. Deck, why can't you help us? Yeah, auto zapper is as much of an enemy as the opponent. So I'm not going to be playing Bantu here. By playing Bantu, they get to enter the God Eternal. So they just didn't activate Ascanta. If they would have activated, like, if they, which is kind of weird, but I was waiting for them to end step as as Kanta activate, and then I was going to Mortify to put it back. 
put the Kefnet back inside in response to the activation. I don't really see any war bosses. I'm going to put another rampage back in. Yeah, maybe ley line one land opener isn't so bad. I mean, if if I knew that they had three thought ragers in their hand, I would have kept the ley line hand. But the other thing is, I I could have just kept one land ley line hand. My opponent has zero of their four thought ragers instead of three. And they just curve out and, and, you know, play stuff like play, you know, Narset into Kefnet or Nicol Bolas and so on while I'm just sitting there not being able to do anything. It's, it's, a, it's a risk for sure. That thought distortion won us that game. Absolutely. We were not winning that game at all if it wasn't for that thought distortion. I thought that top card was going to be Leyline. It's usually where you have your Ley Lines is on top. I don't I don't know I don't really know what you're referencing there hunts <laughs> Hibby, I don't think you have to really worry about people playing thought distortion too much they worked out perfectly there. I don't I don't expect that to be a, a card you'll really see in standard hardly at all. But I've certainly underrated cards before. There's a lot of decks that I'm planning on putting together. I don't I don't know of I don't know exactly what with with what with the Jeskai deck. Exactly what deck that you're referencing or anything. But still have a lot of ideas for decks in my head that I'd like to put together and play eventually. We'll see if the Dark Bargain gets negated or if they save the negate in their hand for something else. Not playing duresses in our in our control deck to try to shut down the gates kind of seems like an oversight. I 
I don't think I can get get out of this. I don't think. Oh, and grass rampage. War boss is the perfect foil to Angrass Rampage. I did keep, I think just one. I kept one Kaya's Wrath in. Wish I kept more. To meet my flames. I'll try to come back for you. Is it just me, or is it getting a little warm in here? I need some kindling. You look Can I these fireworks? Can I win from here? I don't this is gonna be tough. I can create or destroy. Not looking good. Being the Chandra emblem and the, the Nicol Bolas and the Ascanta with zero cards. Yeah, the thought the thought distortion did win us that other game. Can't be too mad at it. Can't be too mad at it. All right, let's try again. We want to we want to face like creature decks. Our deck is just, you know, filled with removal and everything. That's what I, I want to face. Which is kind of looking like what, what we got here. Thanks, Kragic. We playing the, against the deck we just played? That's what it's looking like. Nope.
So right now I'm at six, casting Kaya's Wrath next turn, unless we draw a buddy lands, we don't have to shock ourselves. This attack will put us down to nine, but the Mask of Immolation means eight. Shocking puts us to six. That thing puts us to five. Contempt is good. Mask Immolation, you do have to be worried about that though, because if they if they play like a, a creature, equip the Immolation to it, they get to sacrifice in response to the Contempt. I'm going to keep Mortifying Contempt up here. Activate Treasure Map End Step. Do they just have a bunch of... Maybe they're a three-color deck? Yeah, maybe they're yeah, they could be a three you know, a teamer deck with the elementals and stuff. Cult Wolf. Welcome to the channel. Thanks so much, Wolf. Thanks for that sub there. I appreciate that. Sub number twelve on the day. I do like me some Othakaya. It's a good one. Uh, that's not good. I've learned a bunch of new burn spells to try on you. Hey VGC. Em, Thanks for that sub. Getting the subs in today. Thank y'all very much. Oh, we have a lot of people in here today. Welcome to the channel, everybody. I didn't realize we had so many people in here. Hope y'all are having a good weekend. All right, we'll see if we get to land at Chandra next turn. We'll be using this treasure map that has one... Um, counter already we can flip the the treasure map next turn and use a couple of treasures to for sure play chandra i'm chandra the immolation sensation oh, we're going to start giving a whole lot of emblems try to end this game kind of quickly before these mask of immolation sensations finish us off Is a hellion to start some fire. Say hi to my fiery friends. Hmm. Hmm. I guess we're not going to be taking up Chandra this turn. Hey, at least I tried for this. <laughs> bye bye. Plan is to play Othakaya next turn, have Squee here as a blocker, but honestly with having the Mortify, like this 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 plan could be wrong. You know, like we could definitely get punished for this plan. Uh it could be that I should just be playing Oath of Kaya to shoot them. 
and then uh, and still have like the mortify up and not the squee. I'm gonna be playing Othakai here. I'll be playing I'll play the other Chandra next turn. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I'm supposed to attack or not. They probably don't have that many haste creatures. Just a little Chandra. Can we kill them next turn? No. We're going to need two turns. Yeah, little Chandra gets some hasters. I don't know if they have too much besides that. All right, so if I play, if I play Chandra here, we put four, give them, we give them the fourth emblem. They take four, this upkeep, then they have to kill me, because then the next, the next turn we take up the Chandra again, give them the fifth one. Um, so it's basically, I, you know, I don't have any, any shields. I mean, I just have Squee on defense. It's either that or, or wait, like with the Contempt available. I think I'm safe. It's famous last words. I'm burning up here. <laughs> no pressure. Yeah, I can. <laughs> yeah, I could contempt squee. Like if, if I would have not played the Chandra, I could have like at least the contempt for squee. That's true, they could just ping the squee though also. No, Chandra's minus can't target player. No, this planeswalkers very very rarely can target players. All right, we're still good so far. We only got two more mana. Okay. Yeah, if you're playing... Yeah, that's a good call, Bri Black. If you're playing a Masterminds Acquisition deck, especially best of one, having a Thought Distortion in your sideboard, that's a really good use for the card. 
to be able to get with a Masterminds acquisition in specific spots. Hey, Yager. Thanks so much for the sub there. Welcome back for the 30th month. You are amazing. Oh, y'all didn't remind me we need to crack a pack. At the end of this this match, help remind me to go over and open a pack because we hit our sub goal. Our first sub goal, that is. So I guess it's just Cry of the Carnarium. Oh, I guess Lyra also. Cry of the Carnarium and Lyra. <laughs> Dastin! Thanks for the biddies. Trim a card that may be a little slow. There with the treasure map. Yeah, good call on Chandra, Novice Pyromancer. The uncommon can minus two to a player. I guess more what I was referencing when I said that it's rare that those happen are the minus X abilities that deal... X damage. There's a there's a few of those kind of things, or, or like dam the abilities that deal a whole lot of damage. Like whenever they're dealing like more than three damage, basically those aren't going to players. Yeah, if you click, there's a little uh, diamond shape icon next to a smiley face in the chat. If you click on that, that's how you can get bits for the channel to cheer with. Hey, Mr. Moo. I'd like you to sacrifice one creature. Using the Angrass Rampage there will backfire a little bit if they got Planeswalkers, most, you know, notably the three mana Chandra. I think planar cleansing's in the sideboard for matchups where they have a whole lot of planeswalkers and or other permanents. If you just play against a deck with a lot of artifacts or enchantments randomly, even a deck with like a lot of cre even even against like a creature heavy deck, like a green deck uh, that you know has a whole lot of creatures and everything that you just want like a fourth or sorry a fifth wrath effect even if it costs six mana. Like your command, the Dreadhorde decks that bring back a lot of creatures and creatures and planeswalkers. You can use it there. All right, let's crack this pack. I already had a pack. Let's get another pack. Well, maybe. Let's see how good this pack is. Voracious Hydra is a good card. Good quality card there. We're cracking another pack. Since I, we're cracking our, our halfway to our next sub goal pack. No, that uh, the deck, the Gruel deck that we'll be playing later today will be like our first one of those. Dawn from Dreams. That's a card that I will be building around here in the next coming days. That's a card that I have some ideas of stuff to do with. I like that one. That's a really good card. Yeah, Bloodthirsty Aerialist. Yeah, that's that's a card that um, felt pretty strong whenever we played it yesterday. We played it in a Johnny's a deck, a deck that we called a Johnny's Pride because it was built around the four mana Johnny. It looks like my arena needs a reset too. How it's kind of lagging and everything here. Um, the four the new four mana Mythic Johnny. 
plus a Johnny's Pride Mate, plus the Bloodthirsty Aerialist. I was quite pleased at how Bloodthirsty Aerialist played. We definitely like seeing Basic Mountain, especially with his hand with Dubs, Othakaya. Now, if we hit land drops or not, that's a different story. Yay. No. Using the Angress Rampage does make me vulnerable to Chandra on their side. Yeah, I like Grixis Control. Grixis does have some holes, and there's there's a lot of decks in the metagame, and it's it's kind of hard for it to, to cover everything, but it's a fun deck to play. Nickel Bolas Dragon God is a very, very good card. And kind of makes up for it. But yeah, we'll be playing that deck up next. As you see there. Okay, yeah, my arena really needs a good reset. I was hoping to draw a black source and be able to cast Kai's Wrath. That was the hope. Last turn. One mana draw twos are pretty good. We'll see how many more light up the stages they play. I was told you're only allowed to play four. But I don't know. Looks like our opponent may have like ten of them. At least eight in here. <laughs> All right, so we're at five. This is where our four ley lines are coming in. You know, like this is this is the matchup for the ley lines for sure. We don't have ley lines game one though, so game one's gonna be tough to win. Which three color combinations are the best for control decks? Yeah, Esper and Grixis. Those are probably the best. Um, reason being... Uh, Thought Erasure is... Thought Erasure is probably the best card for any control deck. Like, the best singular card if you had to choose one card. And those are the... Those are two with blue-black. There. Um. 
I'm not sure if we really have time for treasure maps, honestly. It doesn't it doesn't feel like it. But is treasure map better than discovery? I'm not I'm not sure. I guess maybe we get rid of both of them. Hmm. I think I'd rather have Discovery than Bontu basically all the time. Yeah, just the Spark's good against Chandra and Frenzy, but we we have a lot of other answers for Chandra and Frenzy. I guess you know we only have the Mortifies for Frenzy, but um, we have other good things. the The other thing about Dispark is that they could have Rekindling Phoenix, which would make Dispark's value go up. I think other other decks I would usually play want to spark for for I'd, yeah so I usually want to spark for this matchup but we have so much removal that I don't think we need it yeah it's all about leyline I want treasure map instead. Uh, no, I'm not sure we need all four Chandras. No. Maybe I'm supposed to cut more of those for more treasure maps. This is about the only kind of hand I would consider keeping that doesn't have Leyline. You think I should be just hard mulliganing for Leyline? This one's good, though. I want to scry next turn. We're not playing a two drop next turn anyway. So I want to take one more draw step before I scry, so I just have more information before I scry. I would not be keeping this on the draw. I agree with you that this is too slow on the draw. But I, th I think we can maybe get there with Wrath, Lyra on the play. Cut the Morphi up in case we needed it. But I'm willing to take the 3 damage to have Mortify still in my hand. Ideally, we'll play Awakened Inferno next turn.
All right, with the Vyashina Pyromancers dead, they won't have like one mana Wizards Lightnings. You know, if I if I just slammed like the Dawnbringer and let them have Pyromancer, so they could have like Wizards Lightning Shock to take it out. So waiting an extra turn there. All right. Can we get game three on the draw, though? Ever see a volcano erupt in person? You're about to. Oh, looks like someone's getting a little sweaty. Crisis. Come on, be polite. Wow, annoying. Hope it's not too hot for you. Well, yeah, we're we're not going to be taking out Big Chandra from our deck. It's our only win condition besides Lyra. Like, we're not going to be taking it out of the deck completely. But are we going to be playing four on the draw? Probably not. Um, I think we can probably get rid of a couple, but yeah, we're, we're going to need them. Like the Chandra's, you know, ideally we have like the Ley Line of Sanctity and can slow the game down quite a bit and the Chandra's, could, you know, help us win. Uh, you wanna fight? Yeah, the Chandra you emblem got... stack. Yep. So yeah, they have two emblems, so they, they take two every turn. We didn't see a single burn spell from in that game, right? It was just all all creatures. Lots and lots of creatures. I'm just gonna trim one. One Chandra, one treasure map. <laughs> Lyra Scoop Bringer. Yeah, I mean, she was aptly named with being a Dawn Bringer. She does bring the Dawn if you don't a answer her. Which is, are the scry lands just as good as the current dual lands in standard? It's... They're... They're different. It's it's hard to say, like, just as good. It's like, what metric are you really trying to gauge that on? The thing about the uh, buddy lands, or whatever you want to call those, and... The shock lands is that they synergize perfectly together. They work so well together that that's those are like the lands that you really want to build your three color mana bases around. On their own, with just what they do for you, the scry lands do more than what any of the other dual lands do by being able to add the two mana. And also set up your next draw step. It's a very valuable effect. I don't know why I led with planes there also, by the way. I should have led with Dragon Skull Summit. But then I guess I'm not... Yeah, I'm just not casting this Antgrass Rampage, like, no matter what. Um... So playing... I want to take all the damage here. Playing the Shocklands and the Buddy Lands together is really what you want to be doing. 
which is why the scry lands don't exactly fit in currently. I'll just keep my options open instead of a treasure map activation. In case our opponent like just plays a frenzy this turn, maybe, then we mortify the frenzy. Good turn. Not playing Chandra. So Othakai kills Chandra here. So I'll just do that and, and save the Ingress Rampage. Now you've done it. We're done here. Chandra's ability, whenever it takes damage, it has to do damage to an opponent or a Planeswalker and can't target this opponent, so it has to target a Planeswalker. And Chandra is the only Planeswalker on the battlefield. So we're definitely feeling safe here. The ley line was a big pickup, but we do have to win the game also. Hey, Warlord, thanks for the Twitch Prime sub. That gets some hype votes in the channel. But while I need that land, there we go. Say so we need that land for Chandra, but we also need to find Chandra's. That's, that's really all we're trying to do at this point is find Chandra's. All right, we're going to use one Mortify. I'm saving the other Mortify for a Frenzy. It's possible I should just be using the Angrass Rampage there, but Rampage could, like, take out a Tybalt. Or another Chandra. Is there any reason to wait on using the Mortify? You say, why use it on your main phase? I don't think there's any reason to wait if I'm planning on killing the creature. It doesn't. I don't, I don't think red is like playing anything that will keep their creature alive, but. I don't know, there's not really any upside to waiting. Alright, first Chandra. Leyline Sanctity does not protect Chandra. It used to. They actually changed the rules with that not that long ago. But Leyline Sanctity, like, because, you know, it used to be you had to burn spells to Planeswalkers. You, you targeted the player and then redirected to Planeswalkers. 
that was changed with, I think with Dominaria is when they changed that rule. So now Leyline Sanctity doesn't protect Planeswalkers anymore. Yeah, it's Dominaria, right, I'm pretty sure. Aw, looks like someone's getting a little sweaty. But here we go, 18 turn clock. Let's do this. This is just gonna be bad for you. What? That's it? Alright, our Chandra stay alive. So we get another emblem. <laughs> no pressure. And more loyalty over there. Uh, Rampage. Get rid of the Chandra. I should have auto tapped. That was not the best tapping. Now I have to use a treasure if I want to contempt this thing. Or Kai's Wrath. I'm going Kai's Wrath. So not the best, but it's looking good. We got to untap with the Awakened Inferno, so it's it's kind of unlikely that they kill it this turn. Leyline Sanctity, very good. We would have certainly been dead if it wasn't for it. Is it just me, or is it getting a little warm in here? Alright, now we have a five turn clock. Next for me. Crassus, you don't need to be insulting our opponents. Our opponent played very well. Could, that last card could have been Fight with Fire, I suppose. It was probably Lava Coil. That was Fight with Fire. How about that? Could have done all 10 with the Fight with Fire. Gonna be two and one. So we're playing the four ley line of sanctity. It's a good question. I think so. So the question is, does Wanderer? Yes, Wanderer would prevent the damage from Chandra Emblem. Yes. Yeah. All right, I'm going to reset Arena, how it's acting up. <laughs> yeah, our deck our deck takes a long time to win. <laughs> it uh it does. 
So that's why, yeah, you're saying the deck, you thought the match took longer than it expected. Ours doesn't win, doesn't win too quickly. You know, we have, we need to find our six mana card, play it, and then our opponent starts taking one damage a turn. <laughs> if we're lucky, the six mana card sticks around and then they take a two damage a turn. <laughs> Not a very fast win condition here. But yep, it is a win con. The new the new dual lands you won in two color decks, the old ones you won in three color decks. I mean, well, the old ones you just won all the time, but the new dual lands you basically just won them for the most part in two color decks. Our deck is super super slow here, so we got some temples, um, and they've been good for us. I've liked the temples here in this in this deck. Pretty easy mulligan. We're not keeping any one lander. It's been surprising how many one-landers we've seen here with our 26 land deck, but, you know, it happens. The white ley line does not stop Dread Horde or Manipulation, no. The white, land, the white ley line does not stop either of those cards. It doesn't interact with the, either of those cards whatsoever. Watery Grave is not what I want to be playing against here. We want to be playing against creature decks. With all this removal. Uh, our lone loss so far in the three rounds was to the Watery Grave Thought Erasure deck. Alright, good card there. There are so many mysteries to uncover. Put thoughtfulness before action. So is this Grixis or Esper? Which one? I don't think it's just blue black. I'm guessing it's Esper. My mind needs a rest. I'm guessing Esper. So that Narset was basically just a Mind Rot, you know, discard two. I had to use my Mortify and my Othakaya to get rid of that Narset. I'm going to be playing Treasure Map here. Um... 
we have the Kaya's Wrath to take out, you know, they get like another token or two. It's not really the end of the world because of the Kaya's Wrath. If they do draw a second Thought Erasure and take the Kaya's Wrath, that can be a little more problematic. me later. Bounce the Othakaya. Nah. I chose a treasure map. I'll protect you. Are we going to be, like, are we going to be beating Command the Dreadhorde at all? I've got time. How do we beat Command the Dreadhorde? We don't even have Elder Spell. How do we beat a bunch of Planeswalkers? I'm not. I'm not confident in us winning this game at all. This match. Really surprising the discovery was the take. I'm just saying that they have this covered pretty easily. Here we go. I don't mind drawing drawing the land too much. No, I yes, I, I could have I could have upkeep scryed. I don't really mind drawing the land though. We we're gonna need six lands. Yeah, I could have upkeep scryed. It's working out, though. We'll be able to Dark Bargain or Contempt plus Treasure Map next turn. Let's slow this down. Yeah, we got a Dark Bargain in here. No, I am not making this up as I go. It's been pretty decent. The Dark Bargain, that is. It's been pretty decent. This might be a bad idea. I wonder if Mastermind's acquisition would just be better, though. Like, if we could have just acquisitioned and grabbed, um, you know, went and grabbed the Thought Distortion. Because that's about the only card that we could possibly win game one with. We don't. Don't have too much of a chance. 
all this is is just a waiting game for them to draw Command the Dread Horde, put everything into play, and we lose. Let's skip to the good part. We'll see if they got main deck veto. Nope. Okay. You just let me know if you're up for round two. Yeah, our we could have we could have command the dread horde in our sideboard for this kind of matchup to try to dread horde them first. So the problem with playing very slow one-for-one -one decks like this is against the aggro decks, you're good. But against these mid-range <clears throat> and control decks these days, there's these cards like Command the Dread Horde that just go so far over the top that like you just can't you can't really realistically ever trade one for one and compete. I've done the hero thing before. Hone your prowess. Our opponent by taking up the Teferi is letting us spin this treasure map, so that's good. It's very good they didn't bounce that again. We, have a, we do have a, a planar cleansing in the sideboard. Yeah, Elio, sorry, I just saw your message. Um, do exclamation point playlist. That's how you get the song playlist. Sorry, Hawkeye's kind of sitting here in front of my keyboard. I can't do it myself. I just type nothing. exclamation point playlist to get the the link to my I have just the trick Spotify playlist. could use theater of horrors if you don't have treasure map that could be another similar type of card if you're going more budget Past, and are bound by threads of time. could play more dark bargains if you want a non-rare Oh, I'm dumb. You can probably tell I already checked out of this game a little while ago. I've got it. <laughs> Whoops. Meditate and prepare. Our chance just went from went from zero to less than zero. If you're playing against control, don't don't play this deck. If you're trying, if you're playing against control a good amount, um, but if you're playing against aggro, this deck's pretty sweet. Like this, we have a lot of good stuff here against aggro and creature decks. Um,
So I got two Thought Distortions and a Planar Cleansing are the only cards here. Leyline of Sanctity is not a card you want against Esper at all. Uh, even if you somehow, even if you do have it in your opener and you get it in play and you would stop Thought Erasure, they just bounce it with Teferi and then Thought Erasure you. It's not like the games, like the games take, you know, 20 turns. It's not like they don't have times just to get rid of the Leyline and then discard and still take stuff. So this, this card's a trap here in this matchup. It's a lot, Grixis struggles with getting rid of it, which is why I liked it more in that matchup. Dispark gets rid of Big Teferi, but that's it. All their other things are, I mean, Basilica Bellhaunt too, but that doesn't really count. Like their, you know, Little Teferi, Narset, uh, Hero, none of those things are getting disparked. I do like Cry getting rid of Hero and exiling Hero. I do like Cry. Let's get a Cry in there. Um, all right, we're just going to kind of trim our removal suite a little bit. Yeah, we don't have any Elder Spells in here. It's, it's tough for us to keep up. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate. I feel like we need more big sweeping effects that can account for more than one card in here. Standard's very powerful right now. All right, let's see. Yeah, Star of Extinction, Planar Cleansing, our own Command the Dread Hordes, those are all options of card of things that we could be playing. I don't really want the Kaya's Wrath too much here, honestly, but I don't want the Chandra in my hand. It's it's a good chance my opponent's thought erasuring here on turn two. Like it's pretty common for you know turn two thought erasure. Bloodfast. So I I wanted to keep the Chandra on top for the turn uh, with the turn two thought erasure in mind. I do think our deck should have more Planeswalkers. Like, I think the three CMC Chandra would be awesome in this deck. With us having so much, like, two and three mana removal spells, uh, being able to flash back. I guess we don't have, like, just tons, but if we had, like, Duresses also, we'd be able to flash those back uh, with the three CMC Chandra. And it'd also, like, give us a card that we could just play and, you know, make the 1-1 one, one creatures to help ping our opponent. Uh, ping little other little planeswalkers and stuff. I do think three CMC Chandra could fit in here. No, I don't play modern anymore. I used to, used to play it a lot, but not anymore. Play standard every day. Yeah, captive audience could fit in here. That's a that's an effect that could. Uh, uh, do a whole lot for us. All right, well, it looks like we'll see what they say here. I mean, if, they're, if they say Chandra Awaken Inferno, we know they're just, like, watching the stream and everything because we didn't play a single Chandra the previous game. So 
But yeah, like if they if they know my deck is like only Chandra, then they get to do this. I honestly don't know what their what their motive of bringing that Mortigo in. Like maybe just just be to look. Okay, yeah, they saw the Bantu last game. I guess it's just to look at my deck and see what I have. I suppose. I'm not sure what they were envisioning the Unmortigo doing when they were sideboarding it in. We want to find. We really want to find Thought Distortion. Besides the six land. Because Thought Distortion can take their entire hand and everything. Um, if they have Discard Spell for Chandra, I'll feel a little worse. But I thought it's pretty likely that they have a Counter Spell in their hand. And then our Chandra would get countered. The focused and disciplined encounter with thoughtfulness before action. I would have had to use two treasures to cast the Chandra last turn. Oh, Chandra can't be countered. I forgot about that clause. Sorry. I, I, I honestly forgot about that clause. I really did. I'm sorry. <laughs> Won't forget our time together. Honestly forgot about that clause. Thought distortion. Dang. Ever see a volcano erupt in person? <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> My bad. Hey, flat dude. Yeah. Have a good one. Yep, we got our 14 turn clock. As good as a clock as we as we got. It's not really quite that also cuz you know, they, they go down to like five life, they get to flip this uh, blood fast, turn it into the temple. I kinda crashed and burned here. Start sacrificing creatures to gain life. So, looking for our six mana cards. Either six mana card, please. Graftigger's Cage is okay against 
Dread Horde and Esper. I would I would rather have um, Silent Gravestone. Like Silent Gravestone is a much better card against uh, against Command the Dread Horde. Graft Digger's Cage is very good against Frenzy though. And Crafter's Cage is better against Rekindling, Rekindling and Arclight Phoenix. Also, this isn't a fight you can win. We need to move quickly. Oh yeah, Cage good against Dreadhorde Arcanist also. Oh, the guy could, like, surprise kill them. If I don't play it, though, it does turn on discard spells. I've already played three discard spells, but that doesn't mean they don't have more. Um, I think I'll keep it in hand. Yeah, squeeze pretty nice. You know, we get to just put it in the graveyard and still cast it. It's a good annoyance. Mind and body All right, I'll try not to like wind and draw multiple cards a turn now and face this Narset. Hold that thought. Of course, ideally, this Othakai will just kill the Narset. Yep, I'm going to be using one treasure on their turn here. I'm going to wait till after they maybe use the discard spell. Tombbound Lich, 1 3, ETB deals combat damage to a player, draw a card, then discard a card. Okay. Dispark is the worst card in their hand, huh? The worst card in their hand is Dispark. What's the deck least dependent on rares from Core 2020? Um, you you don't really need any rares from Core 2020, I don't believe, for Esper. All right, so they had Command the Dread Horde. That card's gone. Teferi's gone. They get one Narset activation. This is hardly my worst defeat. And then, of course, they have the Bloodfast.
just the trick for this. Well, they still have a lot of card advantage. Ugh. I am not going to sit this one out. Try this. <laughs> All right, Tomb Battle Lich coming in here, doing some looting. The loot bound Lich. I know my Whenever we get rid of a big Teferi, somehow it's not gone. Remember how I passed the turn to them with them having no cards in hand and just a Narset? And now they have three, and they have both Teferis. <laughs> uh, Esper's good. Ooh, another emblem. JFS with the sub. Thank you so much, JFS. I really appreciate that support. Thank you kindly. Unfortunately, we have to auto-tap everything because they just want to tap the treasure coves first. I mean, it's honestly possible I should just do the minus... That should just, like, minus and kill, like, this Lich so they don't get to sacrifice the Lich to the Bloodfast. Nah. Nah, it's emblem. Hope it's not too hot for you. The two damage does is gonna put him down to five. Flip the I guess it won't flip the blood fast right now, because the blood fast only triggers on upkeep when they're at five, not like after Chandra triggers, so like they they could pay two life, draw a card, and that would flip, that would trigger the blood fast. Uh, not not really, not yet. I've had. Yeah, we have to use the treasure cove during their turn. Because in our set, this. so we'll be doing it end step. Even though, because of little Teferi, they can cast discard spells kind of whenever. So I train every day. It's just no we can't play knows. anything during their turn anyway, because of little Teferi. Keep an open mind. Oh, you're welcome, Eternal Noob. Glad you're liking the life gain deck. Yeah, that was that was a really fun deck that we played yesterday. I liked that one a lot. But now we're closer to drawing that Chandra again by waiting with the Treasure Cove. So do I let them draw and discard? Yeah. Correct, correct. Even if Teferi ultimated, they cannot exile Chandra emblems. Correct. Chandra, the em you can't interact with emblems. Emblems are there forever. All right, we get a turn again.
How is it that every Esper opponent draws every single one of their Thought Erasures? I guess that's only three Thought Erasures and two Duresses. It's not every Thought Erasure. That was going to be a really good Othokaya. Yeah, draw step discard really is frustrating. I don't know why they have that be a thing. Like, I don't know why they thought that upkeep... Or sorry, draw step discard... Would be a fun thing to have. Thought erasures are already really annoying. Meditate and prepare. Trust me, I have a plan. You know what? I'm not done yet. I don't think I've ever seen this this before. Somebody have you know three of these things. Alright, well, glad we blocked. We are not going to be able to attack in with the Squee. Just really hope they didn't just draw another discard spell here. Um, I don't know, even if they did, I don't know if we can actually win this. I don't know if we can get enough damage through to, to beat this. Argyle's blood fast. Like we need to find, we need to draw mortify for the blood fast. Uh, looks like they have another discard spell. Come on, I've already played five. All right, well that's the last thought erasure. Played all four Thought Erasures, two, two Duresses also. Hero Precinct 1 being gone, though, definitely helps us. The Cry is not a bad draw. This game's taking forever. I can't. I can't. Up, I can't draw an upkeep with Treasure Cove. If I do, I don't get to draw another card for turn. I can only draw one card a turn. It doesn't matter when. I. Doesn't matter when I would activate Treasure Cove.
So those those things happened in the wrong order. I'm pretty sure that my damage should be happening first before their temple flips there. I'm pretty sure. You need to take a time out. Because they're the active player, I'm the non-active player, so mine like there should be going on the stack first, so then mine should be resolving first. Oh, it's their emblem. They get to stack the trigger. Okay. Oh, I've done the hero thing before. It's not my emblem. It's theirs. Okay, that would make sense then. So the good thing here is Tombbound Lich is not a May. It does, like, whenever it deals damage, they draw a card, discard a card. So even though we're dealing two a turn and they're gaining two a turn, so we're not actually getting ahead there, it is... It's not a May they have to, so, like, I don't know. Maybe we maybe we deck them out. Right on it's not likely, but... No time for a break. Uh, let's see. So that was our second Chandra... Oh no, that was our third Chandra, so there's only one Chandra left. Yeah, two Chandras got discarded, one got disparked. Hey, Punk Boyardee. Oh, yeah, Planar Cleansing would be a good draw. Really, now we get the Mortify? After, after they already flipped? Both Temple and... Both Temple and Escanta. I guess I can't. I guess I cannot instant speed anything. We know we're just drawing Squee next turn. I know our opponent is very, very slow. I can't do anything about it though. I mean, I can concede. We're Probably just losing this, but then our, our league's over, so might as well stick it out, see what happens. So yeah, destroying, I basically just don't want them to get like a bunch more creatures and have like a lot faster clock. Destroying Lich does mean that they don't get to gain like the, the same amount of life to cancel me Keep out, but it does mean that, you know, we get closer to decking them also. Which I guess that's kind of our plan. Obviously they have the Teferis that get to tuck, tuck themselves. But maybe we find something to deal with that. It's basically the, her the hero is the thing that idea. speeds up their clock a lot. And that's what I can't really have my opponent have the fast clock kind of thing. Ultimate Teferi doesn't really do a ton for them right now. As long, I mean, there's nothing that costs more than six mana. They'd have to exile seven. They'd have to, you know, exile seven things for it to start doing something.
Should you craft Kefnet or Narset? Uh, I don't know. Those cards definitely do different things. Um, I don't know exactly what deck you want to craft them for, but Narset's an easier craft. It's just an uncommon. You, of course, want to be playing a whole lot of spells with, really, with both of them. I guess I would say Narset's the easier craft. No, I am not making this up as I go. Definitely glad we got rid of the Hero Precinct one before. I think if they had another Hero Precinct one, we'd be very dead. Yeah, we have, we have a bunch of Kaya's Wraths. Or we have a few Kaya's Wraths and Cry the Carnariums. We've already drawn some, though. Yeah, we've already played two Kaya's Wraths I'm and two Cries, so we don't have any Cries left. They tuck their Narset. They have seven cards in their library. We really want to draw Planar Cleansing. That's our best draw. Star of Extinction would be the best. Get rid of the temple. Ooh, whoa. Well, no. Uh, Othakai is not going to finish them off. They get to untap. And plus, they'll have the upkeep. They'll be able to respond to the triggers on upkeep. Hurry. Oh, yeah, they are pretty close to losing on time. They're at 8 minutes. I'm at 21. I forgot the time thing is, was a thing. <laughs> yeah. If you if you hover over, um, oh, I guess whenever you're under eight minutes, I've never I've never had an opponent ever under eight minutes before. So I guess there's a like a an eight minute warning, and then now it starts popping. Now it's just up for good after eight minutes. I've never had anybody under eight eight minutes before. So I can say this is the the least amount of time my opponents have ever had. I guess there's an eight minute warning. That's that's good that it does that, so then it always so then it puts it up so you can see it. That's more like it. This has not been a fun match to play. <laughs> You know what? I'm not done yet. If you show remorse, I'll show restraint. They're gonna have to be careful here. I'll protect you. No, attack with both liches. No, attack with the liches. Ugh. If they would have just attacked with the liches, we would have won if they would have attacked with both liches. Those who cannot proceed beyond the veil of reality are lost. All right, come on, deck. Really? A land? Just anything. Anything here. Slow him down. Anything. My opponent would have milled out. They have two cards in their library. Just, just any spell. We've just not had a spell.
Well, they they wouldn't. They already activated their Teferi, so if they would have drawn their last two cards, they wouldn't have tucked Not anything so else. Fast. And they deal, put me exact lethal when they're about to do the trigger to draw their last card. All right, two and two. So we lost kind of what I was expecting. Whoops. What I was expecting from the beginning happened, uh, as we talked about. Uh, we lost to both control decks that we played against. We beat the aggro decks that we played against. Um, I don't. I don't think our our deck can really compete card wise against other control decks, um, as we saw. Uh, it's pretty pretty tough there, just having all the one for one from removal spells. Um, yeah, I, I think we need a lot. I think that our deck could use just more Planeswalkers, like, in general, for, like, more incidental card advantage. Having just Chandra is tough because your Chandra's just always going to die to their removal. Like, this, the turn you play your Chandra, it's going to die to their removal. You can't... We can't do anything. We don't even have Duress, even, to protect Chandra. Like, we we have nothing to protect Chandra against a removal spell, and we only have, like, the Chandra's to, to win. That's, that's a really tough combination. Uh... So yeah, even just having like duresses to protect Chandra or something. But we didn't have anything. Uh didn't really have any like the the big um the big play things to come back when we're behind kind of thing. I don't know. Yeah. Oh well, that's that's the deck. I'm going to move on. <laughs> that match was just too long. All right, if you're watching this video later on YouTube, hope you enjoyed it. Please hit that like and subscribe button over there. I would appreciate that. But thank you so much for watching Mardu Control, and I will see you for another video.